Here's our six foot radial arm drill press. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll turn this on today and go through all the functions of it. So we got the disconnect power on the wall, as like most machines. And over in the front of the machine, we just have our typical mushroom switch, which is a turn on this one, and our main power. The machine is now energized and it's ready to drive the motor. It is a two horsepower motor. This machine maxes out on, uh, it's about a, a one inch, inch and a quarter drill bit. And these take the Morris tapered drills or drill chuck for this one. To, this is six feet, so it's three feet from the outside in the center of the spindle to the, the center of the machine. So that's three feet, so they call this six feet. Let's go through and look at all the functions for this. As you see, to move the upper carriage, you just turn the handle. And then to lock that into place, you just use this lock right here, and then that locks that. So as you're locking this into place, trying to find the center of a center pop with the center of the drill bit. We'll go over that later. Back and forth here on this one will be this lock over here. So just bring that up and lock that. And then the up and down will be with this switch right here. So it does have a screw up and down. And that's just to facilitate the length of the drill bit. That's all that is. Going through other features, there's this, the light, and then the coolant. You can see the coolant come out here. The coolant is filled through this tray here, and we just fill in there with the same coolant that would use for the bandsaw. Just water soluble oil, that's all that is. So you have to manually turn that on and off as you're gonna drill. To get this thing to spin, it's just a matter of turning it. That will go clockwise to drill. Wait for it to stop. And this is reverse. If you are power tapping, they'll be going through in reverse. It's just got a reversing chuck that's on it. Over here, we have our speeds of our motor. So gears one through six, low and high, and this will come off of this chart right here. So selection on, and we'll do steel, and you gotta find your drill bit size. These are all in metric. Uh, for like this one here, for instance, 20, that's about a 13 16 and it's on both charts. So RPM, this one here is 154, this one here is 282. Sometimes if you're not sure, sometimes sl uh, slower, and slower feed is sometimes better, not so much chattering of the machine. So for this one here, we'd be using an L and a two. So we'd come up here, it's this lower line over here, we'd be using L and then two. So the two will line up with the L and then also the line, we just put a felt pen line here to line up with the two there. If they don't line up, what you might have to do is just spin by hand the spindle down below just to get the gears to mesh. So, so there's, and that's, uh, those are our speeds. And then we have our feed as well as how fast is it gonna feed. So this here is our, is our feed. So we're gonna lock that in for our, our automatic feed. Otherwise we can just lower by hand. So you could hand feed this or you can have the machine feed it down for you. So for this one here, we'll just leave it in high and six. So the six here does go with the high because it's the same color. Whereas on the red side, the one, two, three is over on the L side. So that's basically just has the three speeds in the low, three speeds in the high. So we'll leave this one on high and six. And the feed rate, the one here um, is gonna feed the slowest two is going to be a little quicker and then three and this will come off the chart so again this one has a feed rate of three if we were using the l2 so we would set this to three that's all that is 
Okay, so from there, um, we can set the depth as well. How deep do we want to go? For this one here, we can put this at one inch. We can lock this in here very simply, and then it'll stop when zero comes up. So this is all set to go, and we'll turn this on. You can see it's moving, and when it gets to one inch or zero here, it will automatically come up, just like that. See this little spindle spinning on the side? That's another feature. You can actually turn this, let's see. Yeah, you can actually turn this and feed. If you're feeding this in, you can hand feed. You see this turning. You can hand feed this way as well. Oh, it hit the automatic, so then it came off the, the depth there. So that's what that is there. If you're um, just in, outside the neutral here, you can use the hand feed. It, generally, we don't do that. It's just not necessary. We just let the machine do all the work. Okay, so um, there's our machine. There's all our locking mechanisms and all our switches that we looked at. The chart here, you have to just look at a little bit closer. All our functionalities of the machine. And then from there, we just have our T-slot table for holding down our, our part that we're gonna drill. And you're gonna want at least two of these on here um, to secure this down. Um, uh, more the better. So if you, you can even get four on there. Okay, um, from there we'll have a tool tray over here that we can select our different heights of our different rods and our T-slot bolts here. And if you can't quite find the, the rod that's the correct height, you might have to use a, a shim block like we've done over here on this one just because we needed to shim up because otherwise it would be too low to this table. So you could have to use shim blocks. It's a little bit finicky to set that up, but it doesn't take too long. Uh, from there, um, we just have our drill bits. Uh, these are Morris tapered uh, for these ones. So for this, this machine is, um, is, a, is a number three Morris here, um, uh, which is this one, uh, this one here is gonna be a little bit smaller, so we're gonna to have to make it a little bit bigger. So we're gonna use a, uh, a sleeve for this one. So this is called a sleeve to make the drill bit bigger. Whereas this one here is gonna make it smaller and this will come down. So it's pretty rare you use a, a, a socket. This is called a socket when you wanna make the drill bit smaller, just because drill bits come in different sizes like we can see right here. And then to get this out of the machine, or out of the uh, drill here, you can use a drill drift. This one here uses a hammer. This one has a slide hammer on it, and you can just put it on the end of the table. You can drift it off that way. And to put this into the machine, come over here. Might have to raise the machine up just a little bit so we can get a better view. Need lots of height to get this in here. Bring down the handle. Spin the machine. You can see this slot line up here. So you spin that so you can see that. And then you can put this in like that. And it's a friction fit just like that. And to get that out of the machine, you're just going to put this in here, hold the bit, and then that just friction wedges out of there. So that's putting the bit uh, in and out of the machine. That's all that is. Okay, we're going to go ahead and drill a hole into this structural tubing right here. Just gonna use this 13 16 bit and the centering bit. So we need to support this down. So we have two clamped on here right now and we're just gonna put this third one on. So using this threaded rod and this T-nut, thread this on. Sometimes these threads get a little damaged just because they get a little worn. Sometimes we'll have to rechase the threads. Just be careful with the threads, try not to damage them. 
Use the block here, try to get it as close to the structural piece as you can. So the force is at the front of the support. Make sure the nut doesn't bottom out on the threads, otherwise the nut will get stuck on the rod. Okay, that's secure. You're gonna be using the centering head first. When you put this into the machine, again, you don't need to look at the top there, but it's only gonna go in one way. If you spin it, you can feel it go in. Also, you can just put a little bit of pressure on the bit. Right here, just a little bit, just to force that up in there just a little bit more. The height of the machine here, you're gonna want this. So you're gonna make sure there's a little hole beside this one. You wanna make sure the bit, at least will be able to go uh, up to the shoulder here of this bit. So that's deep enough there. And then it's, it's, we need enough height here to get the next bit in. So the next bit is this one here and we should be able to get that bit in there as well after. Okay, so let's center this up. We got a center pop mark right here. We're gonna bring this over, use this hand wheel. Get that as close as humanly possible. Making sure nothing moves or shifts. At that point, you're gonna lock the rotation left to right. You're gonna lock the up and down and you're gonna lock the hand wheel left or right this way from here we can use uh, the automatic feed or just by hand we'll do this one by hand um, so for this one here we're gonna go uh, fast on this one so we're just gonna go high and five because we'll drill with the l and the two after so we'll just do the one here okay we're ready to go ahead and drill this so we're gonna turn our coolant on Coolant is not quite staying where it needs to be. There's a rod here. Let's pull our rod out. There we go. I'll just bring this down by hand. Oh. So it's bottoming out, that's why the machine's turning off. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stop this and unlock this, and we're just gonna lower this down just a little bit. That should do it. It was just starting to bottom out on the gearing, so here we go. Try this again. There we go, so that's a little bit better. A little bit of pressure on the handles here, so just a little bit. We can see this drilling down here. You can see some curls coming up. And again, you just want to have that. So just the shoulder, just up to the shoulder, this bit here. So just the bottom and then that's just the shoulder starting to show there. Okay, let's go ahead and let's pull this bit out. We're gonna put the Drill drift in here, hold on to your bit here so it doesn't fall out. Give this a turn, you'll feel that click in. And if you want, you can just give that a little snug there as well. So for this one here, we're gonna lock it in here. We're gonna use a depth gauge. We're going to set it at one inch because one inch should be more than enough. There we go. And we're going to put it on low and two. And we're going to use number three for the speed. If something doesn't... There we go. Again, I just turned the spindle right here like this. 
for any gearing that's not lined up. Just give this a little spin and then the gearing lines up. So we got L and two and three coming off this chart here with a 20 mil bit. Okay, we got our coolant on there. Should be enough. And we're ready to go. Here we go. Okay, so something's not quite into gear over here. So we'll just kind of wait till this slows down. These are kind of like a, an old Chevy truck sometimes. Make sure the gear is mesh. Here we go. Let it do its thing. Probably all the way through, never grab the pieces. Want to be sharp. Back up here. So these will come off when it's done. Also, you can always just pull this as well. Okay. Turn this off. The hole is now drilled. And we're ready to move for uh, another hole. As simple as that. And you have to turn your coolant off when you're done. And again, the, the machine is energized, but not moving. Uh, so when we're done, we'll just, we'll make sure all the power is taken off. Take your bits off uh, for this one here. We'll just have to lower this down so we can see the slot. Again, just turn this till the slot lines up. We'll hammer in there. And there we go, got a nice hole. There's our radial drill press, drilling a hole. That's it, thank you.